to my channel, The Sugar of Sean. I'm back for another video. In this video, today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a letter that was sent to me from one of you. But before I get into all of that, if you're brand new to my channel, I upload lifestyle, fashion, and also dating advice content. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit that little bell. That way you'll be notified every single time I upload a video. And I'm also the author of three books. The first one's called The Dating Game, How to Find Yourself While Looking for Mr. Right. My second book, Breaking the Man Code, The Key to Unlocking His Heart. And my third book, Getting Unstuck, How to Create the Life You've Always Wanted to Live. They're all available on Amazon, Kindle, BarnesandNoble.com. I'll be sure to link all three of my books below so you guys can check them out. And if you want to work with me as your personal life and dating coach, or if you'd like to submit your letter for a chance to possibly have it featured in an upcoming video, send me an email to itscoachshawn at gmail.com. That's itscoachshawn, S-H-A-W-N at gmail.com. All right, so now without any further ado, let's get started with today's letter. Let's go get them. Hi, Coach Sean. I just want to say that I love your advice to women and the fact that you give Christian-based advice. I too am a Christian. I'm actually a pastor's wife and that's why I'm writing you today. My husband and I have been married for 15 years. We started out amazing, but the moment my husband began pastoring our new church, everything went downhill. I barely recognize who this man is. Our church can be considered a mega church and some big shots often attend our services. I think it's all getting to my husband's head as he's now more flashy in the way that he dresses and more disrespectful in the way that he talks to me. But that's not the kicker. Three women in our congregation have come up to me claiming they've been sexually involved with my husband, with one claiming she is pregnant and came to me so that we can figure out together what to do. This hurt me so bad because my husband told me he didn't want any more children. We have only one child. I addressed my husband about these three women and he admitted to sleeping with them but told me it was only sex. I asked him why he would step out on our marriage for such a thing and embarrass me and do what he did and he told me that I was too holy in bed. Sean, I remember clearly when my husband and I first started dating, he said that he likes a woman who is conservative in bed because he that's how he knows that she hasn't been around the town. I wanted to leave my husband after the infidelities so bad, but I was feeling pressured by family to stay because it's a bad look for a pastor's wife to leave her man. Uh, we've even had counseling with some of the elders at our church and they too have told me to stay. The elders even consulted with the pregnant mistress to leave the church. We later found out that she had lost the baby and as messy as the situation was, I decided to give my husband another try until one day I caught him red handed. While I was getting ready to go to the shower, I passed the bathroom and heard my husband. Initially, I didn't think anything of it and I was actually on my way to use another bathroom. I listened a little closer and realized he was on FaceTime with another woman, but had the water running because he thought I couldn't hear him. I heard everything. He was asking her to show me some skin and telling her to stand up so that he could see what that bottom looks like. A girl, I banged on that door and told him to get out and all he could say was that I'm sorry babe and I won't do it again. What disgusts me is that this man is a whole pastor and takes our marriage as a joke. The next day I sent him a long text message in the morning telling him that I cannot do this any longer and that I'm staying with my sister until I can figure everything out. He replied saying to me I think that's what's best but make sure that you're back before we go to church on Sunday. Wow. All this man cares about is his image and clearly not me or how he's hurting me. As much as I want to leave, I don't know how to go about doing it. I feel guilty for having to end my marriage, but by choosing to stay, I'm compromising my morals and my beliefs. My husband was not this mean before and I did not know him to be a cheater before the mega church, so I don't know if this is who he is or if the status is getting to his head. I know that God wouldn't want to hurt me like this, but why would God put me through this? Please help. Oh my goodness. First of all, you know, my heart definitely goes out to you. I definitely feel like you're being taken advantage of by your husband, but not just him, by everybody else in your inner circle, your family that told you to go back to this lying cheat, the church elders told you to go back to this lying cheat. Girl, God the Father already gave you permission to leave this adulterous man. He has done nothing but shame you and embarrass you and you're worried about how it looks to him i hope you didn't do what he told you to do and was back in service by that sunday because I, i'll be doggone if you're trying to pretend to be perfect and got me out here looking crazy uh, i think that the reason why your husband is this brazen because you got over all of this and you kind of accepted all of this way too quickly not one woman not two women but three women 
and then one of them popped up pregnant so he's out here having unprotected sex with random ladies at the church the last thing that your husband is is apologetic and sorry in the least for anything that he possibly put you through all of it is about optics how it looks how it looks to his members and the elders at the church he doesn't care about your feelings or he would have never done all of this it's just sex bruh you are a married pastor it's just a sin that's what it should be. If there's one thing a messy dude like this always has, and that's audacity. He has the audacity to look you in the face and expect you to be okay with this. But the reason why he's done that is because you've been okay with it. When the first lady came to you, that was your cue to leave. And then the second, and then the third, and then even the pregnant lady came. And the only thing you could say about that was, I thought you didn't want to have any more children. Your husband is expecting you to be what you've been so far, and that is a pushover. He knows that all he has to do is say he's sorry, and you'll be okay with it. That's all he's always been able to do. He knows how to get you to forgive him or how to buy himself some time. There's a difference between somebody who's actually sorry and somebody who's only apologizing for another chance to do it again. The, uh, the true sign of somebody who's repentant and wants to atone for what they've done is change behavior. Your husband just keeps upping the ante. After he already cheated with the three women and then got the third woman pregnant, why are you so shocked that this man is, is in the bathroom on FaceTime asking some lady to twirl around so he can see what she got? Like, when are you going to realize that he's not going to change? Yes, he might be behind a pulpit, but this man is far from a saint. Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. You sitting here expecting this three-time cheater to change, and that's the three women that you know about. How do you know there isn't more? He's putting your health at risk? Got you out here publicly shaming you? Anybody who's anybody can have your husband. Who wants a man that everybody can have? What I think that you should do is grab up any bit of dignity that you can grab, take that and your daughter, and leave the situation. You deserve better. God gave you an out a long time ago. The first adulterous affair was enough. What if the other woman had lost her child? So there'd be another child by the pastor out here? This situation is messy. And as long as you wrestle with pigs, you're gonna get some mud on you. If you don't get anything from this advice, I want you to get this. You did nothing wrong. You deserve better. It doesn't matter if he just became this way or if he's always been this way. The point is that he's this way now and he's selfish and he's always looking out for him and only him. Be back by Sunday service. The nerve. There is no need for you to feel guilty about ending this marriage. He ended the marriage when he stepped out on it the first time and the second and the third. And when he got the other woman pregnant, and when he was on FaceTime with another woman asking her to twirl around, he ended the marriage. He did that. Stop feeling like you did something wrong. That's how I know that he's been successful at manipulating you. The fact that you would dare feel guilty for leaving this cheat. I don't care if it is bishop cheat or pastor cheat. The man is a cheater. Whether he does it behind a pulpit or not, he's still a cheater. He's definitely been manipulating you, made you doubt yourself, made you question yourself, fed into your insecurities. When he married you, he liked the fact that you were conservative in bed. Now all of a sudden he thinks that you're quote unquote too holy in bed. And I bet you the women who he's sleeping with, I bet he don't think that they're too holy in bed. You got to be careful sometimes when a man goes out of his way to tell you that's not his type, that's not his type, that's not his type. It normally is exactly his type. Don't let what he's saying make you feel some kind of way about who you are. He was just trying to make excuses for and giving himself reasons for cheating on you. There is no reason for him to cheat. If you guys, if he wanted you to be more sexually adventurous, then he should have said something like that to you. The marriage bed is undefiled. There's a whole lot of things that you guys can be able to do. But he wanted to step out because all of a sudden with the mega church, he had options. You're too good of a woman for a situation like this. You deserve better. You deserve better than to be sitting next to a man on a pulpit, looking out into the congregation and wondering which woman in the audience your husband could be sleeping with. Is it the usher? Is it somebody on the choir stand? Is it a new member? You deserve better than all of the doubts that this is causing for you to have. You've talked to your family about this. You've talked to the elders at the church about this. Now you're writing me, talking to me about this. I hope you've talked to God about this, even though you already know his answer. God's answer is clear. You already had grounds t for divorce if that's what you choose. But if you stay in this situation, it's because you chose to. God already gave you his answer. And his answer should be the final one. 
It's completely up to you. If you want to stay, then stay. But just know that you're going to be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your marriage. Anyway, that is pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to thumbs up if you did. And if you want to hear more of my thoughts and opinions on life and love, consider purchasing one of my books. As I said in the beginning, I've written three. The first one's called The Dating Game, How to Find Yourself While Looking for Mr. Right. My second book, Breaking the Man Code, The Key to Unlocking His Heart. And my third book, Getting Unstuck, How to Create the Life You've Always Wanted to Live. They're all available on Amazon, Kindle, BarnesandNobles.com. And if you want to work with me as your personal life and dating coach, or if you'd like to submit your letter for a chance to possibly have it featured in an upcoming video, be sure to send me an email to itscoachshawn at gmail.com. That's itscoachshawn, S-H-A-W-N at gmail.com. I love you guys. And if you like this kind of video from me, be sure to check out my last one, which I'll put right here. And be sure to subscribe right here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, later divas and dudes. Deuces, honey. Thank you.